Welcome to the Home Office Studio series. Today we are talking about sound. How I created the space that treats sound just right. Just right. From all the microphones I use throughout the speakers, which actually are studio monitors, to stands, headphones and uh, sound treating the room, which is so important. I mean super important. What's up everyone, Peter here. You want to dive deep and learn more about the best sound gear to choose? Well friends, this video is just for you. I'm going to gloss over a lot of things in this series, but everything I mention is linked down in the description under the like button, which by the way, you should smash if you find this video valuable. With that said, how does it sound to get deeper in audio? You get it? Sound. Let's talk about audio. We will start with the actual microphones. I attached three mic arms to my desk. The Rode PSA1 has a Sennheiser MKH 416 shotgun microphone attached to it and it is conveniently positioned next to my monitor just above my A7S III in front of the side of my key light. So when I'm shooting, I can keep it just out of the shot, keeping a nice clean frame. Yet, thanks to the mic arm, it gets as close to my mouth as possible and can be directed to the right angle. By the way, I have a separate review on this phenomenal microphone, so if you are interested in that, check it out. The mics on the side are made by Shure, the legendary SM7B and its little brother, the MV7. Both provide an amazing broadcaster style sound and enable me to have guests over if I want to. Oh, and I have reviews on these bad boys as well, so if you want to learn more, click here or links are in the description. Both of them are put on an Elgato mic arm. Since the SM7B is the one I use for talking head video recordings, I went with the traditional mic arm setup. I think it looks super dope, robust and just uh, cooler than the Rode. It is also well built. Now, the MV7 also has a mic arm from Elgato, but it is uh, quite an innovative setup. The Elgato Wave Mic Arm LP doesn't have that typical V kind of shape, but it's flat. This way it takes less space, so the aesthetics are more compelling in, in my opinion. But when folded to me or the guest, it still can be adjusted to the right angle. I love it. All the mics run through several devices connected via high-quality industry-standard XLR cables from Mogami in order to improve sound and give me extra features. The first one is a cloud lifter, which is a mic activator. But what the heck is that? Well, basically it boosts the microphone signal providing extra gain without quality loss. Since the SM7B is so quiet, it needs that. Even though the two other mics don't necessarily need it, but uh, since I have it, I run them through it as well. Next up, I have two amazing audio interface. The Focusrite Scarlett is maybe the most widely used device by content creators. It just works. The 2i2 has two XLR ports, you have dedicated knobs to adjust gain, add phantom power and monitor your audio. The Audi Antivo 8 is also a super high quality device with four XLR ports, plus you can connect your speakers and even instruments. An extra thing that I love about it is that it has an extra mute switch button, so I can easily mute myself. Finally, I have many options to mute myself. I can do it on the audio interface or my Elgato Stream Deck that we talked about, or with the MV7 there is an actual mute button on the mic itself. Now, let's talk about the other part of sound, when I am listening. Not to any surprise, I either listen to it via speakers or via headphones. For speakers, I actually decided to go with studio monitors since they provide a more broad, flat and realistic sound. The brand I went with is the Adam Audio TV5S. 
I put them on an ISO Acoustics Audio Isolation stand, plus for richer bass I added the Adam Audio T10S, which is such a great choice. With its 10 inch size and 130 watt output, this compact active subwoofer extends my bass just so it makes music uh, sound even better. I could go into details, but I have a dedicated review about it as well, so you know, links in the description. So when I'm not editing, just doing general work, listening to music or YouTube, I use my Apple AirPods Max. I will have a separate review about it, but what I want to tell you is that I love how connected the Apple ecosystem is. It pairs automatically, has Dolby Atmos, so I literally hear where the sound is coming from and it provides an amazing sound and even noise cancellation. But when I'm editing, well, I must go old school, connect my Adam Audio Studio Pro SP5 to the audio interface and get a real zero latency sound, which the AirPods Max just cannot compete with. Also, when I'm on a shoot, I also bring the SP5 along as it is way more capable of helping me with sound monitoring. It is an award-winning closed back headphone with balanced and dynamic response. It has all the premium quality like gold, plated, 40mm transducer, the frequency response is between 8Hz and 38kHz, super low distortion and with a sensitivity of 95 decibel per ear that provides an awesome dynamic capability. Adam Audio partnered up with Ultrastone and used a technology called S-Logic Plus, which basically makes the SP5 feel like it's not even on your head, so you can use it for long, long hours. Just as an honorable mention, I got into music production as an enthusiastic uh, person, a total amateur learner, so I got myself an Alasis V65 MIDI keyboard and an Alasis uh, Nitro Mesh electric drum that sometimes I play around with in Logic Pro X and Melodix. Plus, I think the keyboard looks really dope on my desk. Last but not least, we should talk about sun treatment. For some mysterious reason, this small room is like the Bermuda Triangle for sound. It is just that bad. They say that before investing in an expensive microphone, the first thing one should do is sun treat their room. I had to learn it the hard way though. Uh, I think I did a semi-okay job buying some mid-level yet still cheap soundproof panels and bass traps, putting them uh, on the corners. The mystery has vanished and finally I can say I have decent sound. But you should be the judge of that. What do you think? How does the audio sound? What is the quality like? Please share your thoughts in the comments under the like button, which, you know, you could press. I know, it's an, it's an overkill for a small creator like me in a tiny studio like this. If you are a one-man band and uh, need or want proper audio in a tight space that serves as a highly functional, creative work environment, I really hope that this video gave you some tips and tricks for creating your own version of it. I am curious to read your thoughts on it as well. I had the privilege to, to partner up with uh, some of the amazing brands I mentioned in this video, so with this chance I got to create a setup from the ground up. And that being said, if you are just getting started, a lot of these are not necessarily at all. Well, the same applies to light, gadgets, cameras, desk. I think the most important part is to do your homework and take the time to think it through. Many of these things are pretty expensive, so once you make up your mind, you'll have to live with it. This is one of the reasons why I created this series and have these uh, separate videos on different aspects of functionalities. So do your homework and check these videos out right after you smash that like button, the subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. Do it. Done? Good. That's gonna wrap it up from me and this video. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to catch you in the next one, for example, right here. Bye.